Welcome to Using Our Inside Voice, a podcast where we awaken to the extraordinary meaning of everyday mundane life by passing it through a particle collider of different and different perspectives. Today, we're using our inside voice to talk about feeling the pinch of discomfort, that is, and how the work continues as we head out of the harvest full moon and add Mercury to an already lengthy list of planets in retrograde. I mean, we're going to be sitting in this full moon and retrograde energy for a while. So I don't know if we're going to really be coming out of it anytime soon. It's what does it mean to sit in that energy? So generally speaking, you, it's not like, it's not like these energies follow our calendar. They're not timing the way we time. They come in, they come out. We tag it with with a time and a time frame so that we can kind of dive into it and be prepared and, and fit it into our lives with it run on clocks and calendars. But, you know, those energies do not. So what it means to sit in that energy is that generally you'll get maybe a few days to sometimes even a few weeks on either side of when that event is supposed to happen, where things kind of start falling into place surrounding those particular energies. Like for instance, the full moon. Okay. So we're in the harvest full moon. We're kind of in that pocket as we're getting closer to the fall equinox, fall equinox. If you're in kind of more of the pagan realms, that's the, the Sabbat of Mabon. Uh, that's the, it is the fall equinox and we're going to hit that on about 11 days. It's, it's should be about the 21st. And so this particular full moon is in Pisces, but also in Virgo season. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of opposites. There's a lot of contrast in that particular energy and sitting in the pocket of that energy just like what we were talking about um earlier heather and i were were kind of discussing what we were going to discuss today we're discussing we we're, were discussing the plan and we we had already basically recorded an episode last week and unfortunately we lost about an hour and 25 minutes of that recording. <laughs> and I kind of chalked that up to, well, you know, we covered a lot of, I think what we're going to talk about today, but we didn't really include the extra influx of kind of what the full moon and Mercury retrograde energy means in all of that. And I think maybe that's why, we uh, were guided to actually record today or re-record today. You mean forced? Well, I mean... We were forced. Nobody was forcing us. We, we could have done it yesterday. Oh. We could have done it. We could, we could, have, I we mean could do it tomorrow. I mean forced to re-record. Whatever. Whatever. Yes, we needed to re-record. So that yeah. was a thing that we needed to do, that we wanted to do. Yeah. Again, nobody was forcing us. We could have said, eh, I don't want to. But of course, we want to. So... Blah, this is blah. the energy that we're kind of dealing with right now. So I, uh, I'm glad we're re-recording. I personally think that part of the reason the recording was scrubbed by the great beyond is that there were more downloads coming that would tie sure. in. And so I'm glad it happened. I think that this is going to be, we're going to be better for it. Sure. Sure. I totally get that. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's just, there's more stuff going down right now. There's more stuff that is kind of playing into what we had already talked about. And we did get about 25 minutes of, of show that I'll probably um, post sometime this coming week, just because it's, it, it explains a little bit more about shadow season and that'll just be a kind of like a quick refresher and update as to what, uh, what shadow season is or what we mean when we're talking about shadow season. But yeah, this is uh this is interesting timing, interesting time period. We've had 
here in Southern California, we've had crazy weather over the last day and a half. Well, actually, over the last couple of weeks, we've had just searing heat and it's been miserable and so not fall like. But we've had moments where I know both of us have felt kind of those fall energies creeping in where we wanted to be cozy. And now we had rain yesterday and today. And I know that makes Miss Heather anxious a little bit. But well, it I know me, it makes me it makes me anxious for a reason. It makes me anxious because the roof in my house needs to be redone. And so every time it rains, well, yeah, every time it rains, I'm worried there are going to be leaks and I'm more worried about the leaks I can't see than the leaks I can. But that's beside the point. The point is, is that, yes, yesterday there was a lovely breeze. Actually, it was just downright windy and there were crispy leaves blowing down the street and it sounded divine. And um, and today the heat wave is broken and uh, it feels a lot better. It totally feels a lot better. But again, those kind of opposing energies. We had like super heat and then followed by, oh, and now we have some cooling rain and some some actual air. I mean, I wouldn't say it's actually cool. It's just 100 degrees instead of 1,000 degrees. Well, cooling, as in <laughs> I'm, I'm actively seeing the temperature still dropping, which mm -hmm. makes me happy. Yeah. It makes me a very happy girl, and I hope it continues. It looks like it's going to, so yay for that. I am it's it is still muggy though. So Florida can have their mugginess back as far as I'm concerned. Take that take that sure, off. Sure, sure. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So what do you have going on to today this oh morning? Because we haven't like talk talked in what, 2 days? Yeah, I'm definitely feeling the pinch. Um and <laughs> it's funny because when I as I knew we were re-recording I got really excited. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be great because there's more going on and I can talk about it. And now I'm at a point where I feel overwhelmed. So I'm like, oh my God, I have to talk about it. Like, where do I start? Because when you're doing work on yourself, which is all the time, I, I don't even know why I say that. That's just the state I live in. There's no sure. time where I'm not doing work, quote unquote. And it actually makes me titchy, makes my eye twitch to say catchphrases like, are you doing the work? You know, right. it's right up there with love and light. Ew, 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 shut up. <laughs> but um, that is the constant state I live in. And as a result, I am incredibly uncomfortable right now, absolutely feeling the pinch. And it's not a surprise, but it is always a shock. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can... Even if you can see it coming, when it hits you, it's always bracing. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like a friend of mine was telling me that she had gone, she had absconded with herself to the beach the other day because she, she's really having a difficult time emotionally. She needed to get away. She needed a break. She needed to clear herself. And so she went to the beach and she's like, I'm going to play in the water. And then she went out to the water and the water was effing cold. And every time it hit her, it was just extremely bracing and uncomfortable and she said to herself this this feels too much like my life right now i can't do this and she she left she just you know she spent time on the sand it wasn't what she had had in mind when she went but she realized that she was not in a place to take on any more of that sort of slapping <laughs> feeling that you get when life starts to overwhelm you and that's how I feel right now. And, and I've done it to myself. It is a result of, and again, I'm going to use a cliche because I don't know what else to fucking call it. So get off my back. Inner child work. I, I really, <laughs> inner child, I love you. Um, but she has gotten me into something that I am uh, unsure of. <laughs> okay. And it is requiring things of me that I have not given willingly since I was a child, quite honestly. And that is making me very fucking uncomfortable. Can you and elaborate? I can. What? I can elaborate. So a few nights ago, I was scrolling Instagram and I saw an ad for a uh, haunted tour guide. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And... 
something in me lit up and I got totally excited about the idea of getting paid to walk people around a city that I love and tell them ghost stories. That nice. sounded right? fantastic to me. I was like, you know what? I, I have been, I've literally been the hermit uh, for several years now, as, as many of us have, but I'm very comfortable in that. That's my, my home card in the tarot is the hermit. Like <laughs> no one can hermit better than me. I, I dare you to try. You may stay home more than me, but you do not stay in your head in the comforting space of your own mind more than me. I doubt anyone does. I am completely comfortable there. I don't want to change. I like it. However, there is something inside of me, and I know it is my inner child that is saying, it's time to get out. It's time to get out. And this is all a result of, I mean, at first I, I traced it back to the Instagram post I did, what was it, last week or the week before, where I said your inner child is your inner power. Yeah, it was like sometime last week, I think. Yeah. And um, the other message that came through while I was doing that post is you, the adult you, the you that you are now is the shadow of your inner child. Oh, sure. Not only, not only is it is it just a shadow of your former self, in, in that regard, you are the shadow of your inner child, but you have also become the shadow aspect that imprisons your inner child. Sure. I get that. And that hit me pretty deeply. So when I did that post, that was, it was, it, it tapped me into a, a yet another level that I had already been on my way to. It just deepened that. And I was like, wow, that's really deep. That's really cool. But I did not understand where it would take me. I did not understand when I saw the ad for the job as tour guide, as storyteller, I did not understand that that would take me into areas that I have literally been avoiding for years. And now that it has, I am freaking out and I am uncomfortable. And there is maybe 70% of me that's like, oh, hell no, no, this is no, I'm no. Mm -mm. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing this. You can't make me. But the inner child has awakened and she's been embraced enough to have a say in my life. She wants to play with it. She wants to see what the deal she is. Wants, she wants to pick up where she left off. And where she left off was theater, singing, being a star of the school play. And I didn't, I, I wasn't conscious of any of this when I applied for this position. Sure. And and I knew going into it, I even told myself very, very measured and professionally, now you understand that this is going to be a journey and there's going to be much of this journey that you do not like or understand, but you have to do it anyway. And I was like, oh yeah, I totally get that. That's great. And then the anxiety hit and I was like, fuck you. Yeah, then the practicality sets in and you're like, wait a second, I'm not sure if I'm done with that. I, I have to go to. where? I have to find parking where? I have to say what? I have to learn what? I have to do what? I have to, I have to participate in somebody else's things? Most importantly, yeah. and my inner story's child that was the first step to imprisonment was I have to be visible. Right. Oh, to yeah, totally. Seen. I can't curate every moment of my visibility like I have been doing for the past however many years. That is terrifying. Yeah, that can definitely be terrifying. And I hear you because I've gone through the same thing and kind of coming out of pandemic mode and falling back into the, well, I guess it's time to, you know, like have an income and do things of that nature and, you know, just stepping back into quote unquote, the rest of the world and the way things are being done. And I, you know, it's, it's a give and a take because I have found like, personally, I have found ways to adjust things as I've kind of stepped into them to make it better suit my needs at the moment. 
but it's not like it's perfect. It's not like it's ideal. It's not like, you know, my heart is gushing at the opportunity to do some of these things. It's like, uh, okay, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm doing, and I can definitely still look back at other things and say, well, you know, it's better than when I was doing X, Y, and Z, and I would rather do this than this. So there are still, you know, areas where I'm like, all right, this is still quite a departure from some of the things of the past. So I have to take that into consideration and take that into stock and, and, you know, tell myself, and, and really look at it from the perspective of, look, you may not be in the exact spot where you would like to be right now. However, this is not, um, it's not torturing my soul as one of my, my previous catch phrases from long ago. You know, there were times when I literally looked at things and I'm like, that tortures my soul and mm -hmm. I cannot do that thing. And th this doesn't torture my soul. It um it occasionally irritates my soul, but it <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but it doesn't. It's not torturing my soul. So yeah, and, you know. And yeah. what I've been finding for myself lately, and as I listen to other people, it's gone from this tortures my soul to micro challenges my soul. Yeah, and that's fine because that helps. I mean that that helps us evolve. That. That that's the only way to evolve. That leads to progress. Sure. So, you know, you, you have to have something in play that you can, that, well, that's creating contrast mm -hmm. and that gives you an opportunity to make decisions that you maybe hadn't before. And all of this definitely plays into the energies that we're feeling right now surrounding the full moon and Mercury retrograde. It's like we're both Geminis, Mercury is our ruling planet. We're very familiar with the ins and outs of Mercury retrograde. I don't know about you, but personally, I usually don't subscribe to the Mercury retrograde is evil and it wreaks all sorts of havoc and, and, you know, just go in your room and hide and don't come out. Just wait until it's over and don't do anything. Hold your breath and, you know, put the covers over your head. I'm, I'm not that kind of gal. I see I opportunities for for do-overs now that's not to say that mercury retrograde never throws a wrench in the works it does usually for me it's a te it's in technical aspects i feel the technical pinch of retrograde energy but it also usually means hey you're doing too much slow down back off and don't try so hard let it happen allow it to happen instead of forcing it to happen. That's usually my lesson in the in the technical aspect of stuff. Well, that's everybody's lesson when it comes to Mercury retrograde, because the only time we view it as evil is when we have the perception that it is in opposition to what we are trying to do. And what that says is that we're trying to control our external environment in order to feel safe or productive or whatever the goal may be. But there is something more important telling you that it is not time for that. The energies do not support that right now. And you need to listen. So whether it is, you know, if you're using technical tools, then you're going to have technical difficulties. They're going to get you wherever they can in order to convey a message because it's not like it's going to be conveyed necessarily through words. And even if it were conveyed through words, you probably wouldn't listen because how often do we give advice but not take it? Sure. I so mean, the energy of retrograde yeah. says, you know, the work is returning. You're, you're, you're returning to something that you needed to work on for years maybe. And that's certainly the case with me. I mean, <laughs> adult Heather is not in any way looking forward to any of what inner child Heather seems to want, but it's been a long time since inner child Heather had anything but tokens provided of life. And by tokens, I mean treats and prizes. Yeah. Treats and prizes are a good tool when you're just trying to make it through, they get you there they help. They're a way, they're a form of self-love, but they are tokens. 
they're tokens of momentary happiness that that connect you back to the energy that you can't connect with necessarily on your own. And and they certainly helped me on my journey back to my younger self that I well, I mean the energy is practically the same. I abandoned slash protected to the point where I couldn't access her anymore. You yeah. know, but the work is gosh, part of me wants to say heart wrenching. But that's sure. got it, it's way too somber, you know. The tone isn't quite right. I uh, I had a dream the other night. I can't get through this without crying. Um, it didn't make me cry at the time. It didn't make me cry until I had some time to process it. My dad visited me in a dream, and he came through, and somehow I was consciously aware, like he showed me that he was getting ready to meet me, and it was it took me back. Hmm. it took me back to when I was little and he was acting and hmm. he'd get ready to go on an audition and he was showing me he was wearing like this tan sweater and a collared shirt under he looked really nice now the last time I ran into my dad in a dream he was wearing one of his kooky weird ass summer Hawaiian shirts that were like what are you why are you why is that where did you find that you know, uh -huh. it, was, it was like one of the staples of his wardrobe at that time. That was much later in my life. This was, this was the early years. This was the Wonder Woman years. Yeah. And I hugged him. And then in the dream, I did that, that thing that children do where they cry so hard they can't make sound. Yeah. And I said, I thought you abandoned me. And he said, I would never abandon you. I just didn't know if you'd want to see me. And the weird part of the dream is that it was adult me behaving in this way and receiving this message and processing this message. But I didn't emotionally connect during the dream or just after with it. I didn't have this reaction where I'm like shedding tears and, you know, I wasn't moved like I am now. And what I realized was, is that I had successfully embraced my inner child to the point where she was reactivated. She was alive in me again, and she was hugging him through my body. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> totally. It was an incredible experience. And how ironic is it, and yet not ironic at all, that in the dream, he was showing me his process of getting ready for an audition. Yeah. And here I am facing an audition. Right. But that and can also be so exciting. I mean, I get it. I get it. And it's if when we have set something aside for so long. And we have started creating stories and fears around that thing that we've been, you know, kind of avoiding, but not so much avoiding as, you know, trying to restructure. We've taken a, a portion of our life that maybe however we handled it previously or whatever we chose to do with that portion of our life previously wasn't the thing. It didn't work out how we wanted it to and we learned a lot of lessons kind of tied into that thing and wanted to start kind of you know flexing our flexing our muscles in that area a little bit and kind of taking control in a way of um not so much controlling the situation but but re trying to regain our power in a particular situation and sometimes that leads us to make decisions like, you know, I don't want to participate in that sort of a thing anymore, or I don't want it to feel like that again. And so sometimes we'll push that away. But there's also opportunity down the line as we start to make more progress, as we start to heal, we might be faced with that kind of situation again. And it's going to give us anxiety because there's still a portion of us that's remembering 
look, that did not work out the way we wanted it to before. So how is it going to be different this time? So there's, you know, there's all of these questions that we have to ask ourselves and all of these things that we kind of go through mentally that challenge us in a way and really bring up a lot of fear, bring up a lot of, you know, just stress, anxiety, you know, fill in the blank. There's all of these different emotions that that will keep bubbling to the surface when we're faced with something again, you know, and we're coming back around in that spiral to that area again, and it's starting to raise its hand and flash its lights and going, okay, it's time to revisit me again. And I know that I've, I've been through that kind of patterning several times again now, and it is always so scary at the onset. And I will usually get freaked out to the point where I will make myself sick. And that's usually my cue that it's like, okay, you need to chill and find a place of balance here because you're doing yourself more harm than good at this yeah, point. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I totally feel you. I totally feel you. But I hope, I mean, my hope for you, and I think what I always think of is, there's this weird sort of a thing that bubbles up and and I don't know if it's the same way for you as it is for me, but like in my family, we didn't have a lot of family members that took the educational route that like, you know, went to school, went to college, got degrees, you know, had an upper class sort of, you know, job or career wrapped around a major or something like that. I come from a very mostly blue collar family that was not highly educated um, and that kind of really uh, was like a pull yourself up by the bootstrap sort of a, a family. And, you know, you, you, you do the uh, you do the dirty work and you you do it so well that you make yourself valuable yada 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 fill in the blank and so for me as a kid i loved learning i loved knowledge i wanted i got interested in the thing in the things and wanted to read the books on the things and wanted to continue to go to school and all of that but it really wasn't supported it wasn't supported in the way that I would have liked it to been supported in my household because it just simply wasn't something that they knew. And I can't fault them for that. They don't have, they didn't have that experience. They didn't have anybody pushing them to do it. They didn't feel that it was necessary to, to live that way. They, you know, they saw it in their family that, Hey, people are able to work hard and make it and, you know, still live a successful life. Um, but there was still always a yearning of, you know, there is always a trade off somewhere in there. Like, I love art, but I'm not going to do art because art doesn't make the money. So I'm going to go do, you know, the J-O-B instead. And then I'm going to play the lottery because hopefully one day I'll make it big and then I can quit the J-O-B and then return to my passion. So that was kind of the weird loop that I was fed, you know, when I was younger. So it took a lot to kind of get to a point where I could be like, you know, I, I think I actually do want to go to school. I think I do actually want to take that route. And I was 40 something before I was able to go back and start that again. But in between all of that and during all of that, I still had the J-O-B. <laughs> and I've had to revisit that several times. And I have had what I felt at the time was a quote unquote career. And it was a long term job. I spent 17 years somewhere doing a thing. And that was miserable. Like it had good, it had its good points, but there was a lot of that that I didn't enjoy and that I would have never wanted to go back to. And before then, there was an even crappier version of 
J-O-Bs that came before that. <laughs> and I've kind of revisited that after as well. So I've got I've I've had this like flex of going back and forth and seeing all of these things from different angles and being able to kind of work my way through and find out, well, if I'm going to do something like this again, what does it need to look like this time? What is going to make it worth it to me? What is going to, what's going to, where can I find satisfaction in this? Where can I find growth and expansion in this? And not necessarily from, you know, a, a super woo woo place, but just from a place of is this going to make me ill? <laughs> like, is this seriously, is this going to make me sick to do? Because that was, that is a real question that is in my life all the time that I have to kind of revisit and ask myself anytime I approach this particular subject, because it is something that I've had to deal with before. So yeah, for me, it's, that's, that's a thing is having to kind of ask myself time and time again, if I do this, can I find ways to make it work for me? Can I find ways to make it fun for me? Can I find ways where I can stretch myself a little bit and move past this fear so that I can get to a point of expansion? And I definitely have mm -hmm. in every in in every one of those situations that I've tackled, I can see the point where I have moved past it and went, oh, okay, yeah, like, you would have never done this thing before, you know, you would have never felt comfortable talking to people in this way, or you would have never felt comfortable, you know, uh, making a cold call to someone that you don't know. And being okay if if they reject you like in my current job that is a daily thing one of like my my position is i get well the one thing i get to work from home and that's nice so that works in my favor i don't have to spend money on gas i don't have to drive a car i don't have to leave my home i can be comfortable you know i don't have to wear a, a business casual <laughs> i can i can wear you know I can wear my PJs if I wanted to. Nobody sees me. It's fine. But every day I make phone calls and every day there is a really good possibility that somebody is going to say something nasty to me and hang up on me. And before and in the first, I want to say maybe the first two to three weeks of that particular position, I felt horrible every time that happened. Every time that happened, I could feel my throat close. I could feel my solar plexus not. I could feel this panic of, but why though? What am I doing wrong? Why do people not like me? Why do people not want to talk to me? And it has nothing to do with me. Literally has nothing to do with me. And when I finally got to a place where I was like, oh, it really has nothing to do with me. They're just having a, they're just having a day and they're going through their own thing. And that's the way they have chosen to respond. And so when that happens now, I'm like, all right, moving on. And I just keep going and it doesn't bother me. But that's also a huge lesson for like what we're doing right now. The whole, you know, that's, that's warm up for me for the podcast and for the podcast growing, because you're going to have people that like what you say, and you're going to have people that don't like what you say. And to be honest, I, I cannot afford emotionally for that to get in my way of doing the work that I'm doing here. If people don't want to listen, then they don't want to listen and that's fine. And it doesn't speak to you. And so obviously there's somebody else out there for you and I hope you find them. Good luck and happy journeys <laughs> in that direction, uh -huh. you know, and, and it, I have to be okay with it. I have to be okay with it because that's just how things are. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not always going to be for everybody and not everybody is going to be for you. And that's okay. You mm -hmm. have to be okay with that being okay. But we're not, we're not taught that way. 
No. You know, we're we're not taught to view it like that. We're and especially again for two kids that grew up being like theater geeks holy moly is that ever like usually you're already a misfit because that's kind of how you end up there like you you already are kind of not in with the clicky clickies everywhere else at least that's that's how it was for me growing up was you know the the artsy kids were a whole different batch of people like you know you're not a jock you're not a popular cool kid necessarily you might become a popular cool kid but most likely you were not and so you were already in a position of please somebody like me and then you put yourself out in front of everybody (laughs) doing something creative and said please like me again (laughs) and it's like well art's subjective so they may not like it, but it's not necessarily you. But as a kid or a teenager, you don't understand that. Hell, as an adult, a lot of the times we don't understand that. Mm-hmm. So this was, this has definitely been an interesting process for me so far going through what I do now. And it's, I'm learning a lot though. Like, is, is this going to be a forever thing? No. But am I learning a lot from it right now? Yeah. So I can definitely, I have gratitude for it. Mm-hmm. And and I can show thanks for it. And I can see areas where it's allowing me, it is allowing me to take my power back. Because I'm not constantly looking to other people to say, please like me. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, here I am. I'm a goofball. You know, I, uh, sometimes I ramble, sometimes I don't speak clearly. Sometimes I go off on a tangent, hence rambling. And here I am (laughs) rambling about rambling. (laughs) Yeah. Um, you know, it, but that's part of, that's part of who I am. And that's part of, that's just part of me. So you, you take me or, or you leave me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the the theater kid in me was not, none of that was on the radar when I was little. Um, theater was always on the radar because both my parents were in the entertainment business, in the entertainment industry. Um, before I came along, both my mom and my dad were actors, singers, dancers. And so I was raised with that. It was normal to me. Where the threat of not being accepted came in was actually and sadly directly through them and then it was amplified the the work that would become my life's work in terms of healing was amplified because i told them i wanted to be in the business and that's when the judgment started the, you know, you have to get thinner if you want to be in commercials. And actually, I don't know if I've spoken about this before, even to you, but I was watching a movie the other night and I was hoping it would be a a throwback movie, a modern take on an 80s theme, but it ended up being a much more gritty, realistic take on the 80s all around the valley where I live. It was sure. literally shot in my stomping grounds. And it's called Licorice Pizza after the record store oh, yeah. from the era. But it has nothing to do with Licorice Pizza. <laughs> it it has to do, it's, it's a coming of age story. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, there's this scene where the one character is telling the other character while driving her to his agent telling her how to handle the interview with the agent so that the agent will take her on. And he, during this conversation, I had such flashbacks because it was as if they had eavesdropped on my fucking life and put it in their movie. And I was like, 
how do they know? I wasn't the only one that went through this. The conversation was very much along the lines of, if she asks you, can you do this? You say yes. If she asks you, if you'll do this, you say yes. If she asks you, if you are afraid of this, you say no. And if she asks you, are you willing to do this? You say yes. And for me, that was exactly what my parents said to me when they were driving me to some of the most horrible people I've ever met in my life. Sure, because they're putting their own fears and uh, and their own experiences in the business Absolutely. on you, which because is which business. is what it is. It is. It's and it's what every family member who would be connected to that would do. Mine included, yeah. because I mm-hmm. I had that happening on my side of the family too, but it was it was a little more removed than Mm -hmm. in your situation. So I had kind of those, like um, when I was really younger, like we'd go and we'd visit my aunt who was in the business and my cousins who were in the business. And it would be kind of like a, Oh, we're over at their apartment and -and so-and-so comes over And then there's some sort of discussion over, oh, yeah, isn't she cute? Look, doesn't she look like so-and-so? Oh, have you ever thought of, oh, well, you know, let's, and it's like I would be almost kind of tricked into doing some sort of, like, audition-y thing. Like, not an audition, but, you know, kind of like a, well, let's test her and see how she does sort of a thing. But, But on the sly, so she doesn't know that we are. But I always Mm -hmm. knew that something was going on because it was normal. I was very clued into the behavior of others. And when people acted outside of what I recognized as quote unquote normal, it was like, hmm, they're doing something here. Like I may not exactly know what they're doing, but they're doing something here. So yeah, (laughs) yeah, it's like I, I get it. Mine, mine were not games. They were blatant tutorials on how to get a yes. And you got a yes by saying yes. And now that I'm in this position, which by the way, did not work out before I continue, it did not work out for my parents, nor did it arguably work out for me in the way that I thought it would. Because as soon as she said, will you cut your hair? I said, I didn't say anything. I shook my head. Wow. And the interview was over and she escorted me to the door. My, my little, my little, how old was I? Oh gosh. Oh, I don't remember how old I was, but it was prior to sixth grade. And she escorted my little ass to the door. She opened it and she said, thank you. And we left. Isn't that a shitty and- thing to ask a kid? Like, are you, are you going to cut your hair? Like that's an identifier when you're little. You that's have to say it. Well, especially since my hair was down past my ass and everybody right. was like, oh my gosh, your hair is so beautiful. Don't ever cut it. So I had the majority of adults that I ran into in my life were like, don't ever cut your hair. You'll never get it back. Yeah. And then for one day only, I'm supposed to do as my parents say. And if she says, will you cut your hair? They literally said to me, Heather, if she asks you, will you cut your hair? Do not worry about it. You will not actually have to cut your hair. She just wants to make sure that you're going to say yes. So say yes. Isn't that rotten? That's the most rotten thing ever. That is the most fucked up thing that that might be one of the most fucked up things that ever happened to me in my life. But I'll tell you what I did. I said, no. I shook my head. No. I was like, I can't lie. I, I, that's how long I literally have not been able to lie in all my life. And they're like, just lie. And I'm like, my parents who had up until that point rewarded for rewarded me for being good, quote unquote. And part of being good was you don't lie. You tell the truth would now reward me just flip flop on everything I'd been taught and would reward me for saying yes, even though it was a lie. Right. Right. What do I do with that? as a child. And they didn't, you know, they were looking at it from an adult point of view. And the adult point of view was this is the business. If you want to be in the business, you have to play the business game and understand that just because you say yes, doesn't mean that that's actually going to happen. In an adult mind, that may make sense. In an adult mind, it may make sense. Hey, you're a kid, just do as you're told when it's convenient. But in my mind, it meant they were now unsafe too. 
they did not have the ability to protect me as I thought they would because they're willing to sell me out to this horrible witch, Iris Burton, of a bitch woman and tell me they're going to protect me later. So I'm supposed to depend on your words, even though you're telling me to lie and hope that later you're going to save me from the big bad woman you just left me alone with in this office. Right. Make it it's make like, sense. It's like, well, well, which which lie is which which one is the lie and which one is the truth? Are you lying that you're that you're telling right? me that it that I don't have to or is like which which one is it? Mm -hmm. And man, what a screwed up thing to have in your head about your parents for the rest of your days, right? The rest for the of rest of their days. It's like, uh, if they lied about this thing, then what else are they going to, it's, you know, it's like Santa Claus and the mm -hmm. Easter Bunny and all those other things, you know, the Tooth Fairy. It's like, well, what else was, did you just kind of make up and then decide that it's not cool to do that? And it's like, why bother? Why start this charade if we're not going to follow it through? And moreover, what are the parameters of convenience that will make you change your mind to not be in my favor? When well, you truly believe that everything you are doing to me and for me is in my favor. That doesn't just make a child question their family's values. It makes them question if their family even knows what values are. Because when you're a child, it is very, you have your thoughts and feelings about injustice. And if you're a child whose parents aren't listening to those thoughts or valuing those thoughts or are listening to them and then telling you, yes, but just this once, do it as I'm telling you to do it. How do you know how to navigate the rest of your life? After that moment, when the people that are supposed to keep you safe and help you flourish are only going to do it when it's it actually suits them. And that's kind of one of this just the the screwed up things of this entire journey is you're going to go through multiple versions of this. You go through it big time as a kid and then you continue to go through it as an adult as you keep shifting through your life things will come in where it's like, oh, this is how you have to play this. And then the game changes or the rules about the game change. And then you're like, fuck the rules. Why rules? Why do I have this? Why am I listening to this? Why did I start this in the first place? And it's like, well, because it's providing a lesson. Okay. But how many lessons are we going to do? Oh, until we die. Okay, cool. Well, I guess <laughs> that's a thing that's going to happen. And, but you know, but it's like, it's, you go from a place of just being thrown into the game and not understanding what the game is for or what it's doing for you or, you know, how it's helping you or if it's helping you to moving along to a place where, okay, now I kind of get why all this is happening. I'm still not necessarily down with all of it, but I see where you're going with this and I see how I can interject my own self into this and you know and take back my power in these situations so okay i see an opportunity for for advancement and and growth and expansion in this so i'll play along to a certain extent but when you're a kid it's there's there's no you're not having you're not, nobody's sitting down and having these conversations at the dinner table in 1976 i'm sorry it wasn't happening <laughs> If it did, then like cool on you and wherever you are, you're like an incredibly well adjusted 40 something or 50 something that is like, you know, good with all of their shit. And I, I commend that. Like, that's awesome for you if that's the case. But for most of us, it is not. And for I feel like a lot of kids coming up, that is starting to shift where there are more people available to have conversations with their kids now going look this is kind of a messed up thing that we're involved in here and there's going to be a lot of lessons but 
you know, and I'm not perfect. So I'm sorry if, you know, if I make mistakes, but let's sit down and talk about all the things. And if you have questions, like I'm, I'm here to help you navigate through that. That's an awesome, healthy relationship. So I think one of the first things you have to do as, you know, if you're, if you're a parent now, especially of young kids is just be honest, be honest with your kids of, you know, how life works in general. Sometimes you do things that you don't necessarily want to do, but it helps you get to a particular place. And in amongst all of the crap that you go through, it's a learning experience. So you have that to take with you. But you also have these options over here to play with. And by the way, X, Y, and Z, you know, you have to just be frank. I mean, kids understand, I think, so much more. And I don't want to necessarily get into a whole conversation about, like, you know, kids and parenting and stuff like that. I don't, I don't have my own children, but I have been aunt to many and I have practically raised a child, my younger brother, because we're 10 years apart. And my parents went back to work. And so it was mostly me and him. And now he just had a kid. So there's a really interesting, like, loop of stuff happening right now. And I'm kind of, I'm seeing, I'm seeing more often, and I like it, that, that people are, are recognizing, you know, maybe the way that I grew up and some of the things that my parents offered me as truths were not healthy and maybe I should shift that when it comes to my own kid because I don't want them to have to go through some of the things I had to go through like lessons are abound that's going to happen you know there's going to be there there's going to be everyday life stuff that happens to them but I want to help them navigate that and I think that's cool Well, Um, I would say that my experience growing up with my parents, they were very open-minded. They were like that. That was their good side. They very much supported that energy. The problem is that people don't realize oftentimes when they're triggered, especially if it's someone who comes to them that they love with a problem they're afraid of. And so I think every parent listening would be like, yes, absolutely, 100%. Be transparent with your kids. Share what you've gone through in your life until it comes to one of their triggers that they they have yet to heal. Then they are completely unconscious. And that's when it can't be helped. The, The unconscious takes over, the ego takes over, and all of a sudden you're telling them something that could damage them for the rest of their lives. Welcome to being human. <laughs> you know, my parents weren't trying to damage me. They were just, they had a bunch of unhealed stories in them about what it takes to be accepted and how to fake it till you make it because that was just the way it was. And sure. when someone's living in a position where that's just the way it is, they don't realize that there is a reality or many realities outside of that belief system. Because the illusion sure. is so real that they accept that as immutable. So I yeah. think the real goal when you're raising children or anting children or <laughs> helping younger people who are going through the shit is to become aware. And, and I think this goes with any relationship. It's not just children with any relationship. Yeah. The more you become aware of your stories and the more work you do to dispel your own myths, the more helpful you're going to be to other people when they come to you to lend an ear and some advice. Sure. And, and right now, again, the energies, the current energies in out in the world, support that right now especially those surrounding this full moon and mercury and retrograde you had like i i listened to um there's somebody that i follow on uh instagram that does really great astrology reports i i dig astrology but 
it's not my main passion. It's not my main focus. So I really dig it when I find somebody that I connect with where that is their main passion and focus. And they can kind of break down in a really elegant way things that I'm already experiencing. So it, it makes for a really nice, you know, um, confirmation and validation in, in what I'm experiencing. And today, uh, the gal that I was listening to <clears throat> was basically explaining some of the ins and outs of, of this particular full moon that we're having. And it's interesting because we're, we're in Virgo season. And so, you know, Virgo has a lot of, yes, there are nurturing aspects to Virgo, but the kind of more outward expression, I think that most of us are used to, to Virgo is, is very logic based, very in the head, um, very, uh, very linear in a lot of ways and has is kind of a ta task master and likes things the way they like things. Now, none of these attributes are, are wrong or bad or, you know, inherently horrible in any way. I'm a Virgo rising. It's, it's definitely a part of me that I connect to very strongly. Um, a good portion of the time, sometimes even more than my, I'm, I'm a double Gemini. I am a Gemini sun, Gemini moon. So you think I would be more <laughs> scattered than I am. And sometimes I'm really grateful for that Virgo rising though, because that Virgo rising is like, let's, you know, gather up all these stray ponies and head them in, in a particular direction, please. Um, and again, I'm very grateful for that. But that energy is very, it's so specific and it's so driven sometimes. So it's hard to break free from that mold of, you know, of it needs to be done this way. Or I have a very OCD way of looking at this thing oh. and the Pisces energy that this particular moon is sitting in is very, you know, this is the dreamer. This is the flow. This is the ease. This is the kind of mystical mountain floating somewhere that is, you know, begging you to get creative and to think outside the box and to do things differently. And that's my husband's energy. My husband is a Pisces. And so he definitely teaches me a lot on, on that, you know, from that side. So it, it's always interesting in my life when things like this come up, because I'll start seeing the tests kind of early where it's like, okay, how, how much of this particular thing are you going to be able to stand before your little logic brain kicks in and wants to go, you know, full blast on this situation and organize the shit out of it or or try to dial it into this nice neat little package that you can manage easier for yourself and there's been a lot of things come up in the last two weeks that have seriously challenged my logical brain and I've had to step out of that and just take it easy and take a moment and go, but what really is going to serve me in this? What feels better? And that really has to be the question is what feels better? Get out of your head, put that shit aside. And what actually feels better? Because that is what is going to trigger you down the road to act one way or another. It's, it all comes back to the feeling for me. Like, is it going to make you sick? If you push this on yourself and you stick with this particular agenda that you've created, how are you going to feel about that in a week, in a month? Hell, in the next hour, how are you going to feel about that after you actually, you know, put that on the calendar and set that in stone, you know, so to speak? Are you going to allow yourself room to, to keep rearranging that or are you going to get very frustrated and, um, you know, almost belligerent about it 
to the point that it, you know, it, it's not serving you at all anymore. And you just need to kind of, you know, you, you need to back out, but you didn't leave yourself any room to, to shift it or to allow it to evolve into something new. And so like for me in the last week and a half, um, I, I had in the last episode, I had explained that for the fall semester of school this year, which I was very excited about initially, I, I ended up finding out at the very last moment that I did not get the financial aid that I was looking for to actually attend the semester. And so my big plan became not a plan at all in a very short amount of time there was just i i mean it was pretty finite <laughs> it's like look oh, i i cannot man. pull i can't pull this out of thin air i cannot make it happen i cannot force it to happen i'm going to have to revisit it okay so you know that was hard but i had to wrap my head around it and move into a new space and kind of see where okay well what else is going on right now that that needs more of your attention obviously something does or you would be going to school right now something would have come through something would have popped up and you would have been able to go and my way of logicking around that with the virgo side of my brain was okay well i can't do that right now <clears throat> but instead i'm going to go back to the community college that i have been going to and take a couple classes and just keep in the pace so that I'm not screwing that up for myself. And that felt good for a while, but I had to make really like split second decisions because it was literally like the two days before the semester was starting. And so I didn't get the classes that I wanted. I didn't get classes that made sense for me. And then I started learning about like these exorbitant fees for like class materials and things like that. And I got to the point where I was like, you know, um, this isn't right. This doesn't feel right. I'm not excited about it. It doesn't feel good. It feels like something that I have to do instead of something that I want to do. And then, and, and although I agree that there, there's probably some value in it somewhere, I would rather pick it up in the spring semester and actually be able to look at a course catalog and take things that make sense for me in a timing and in a way that makes sense for me um, instead of just jumping in. So I, in the last week and a half, I have also dropped the classes. And so now I am not doing school this semester. She's Which, free. She's free. <laughs> but I haven't not taken a class fall semester oh, no. in seven years. And there would have been a time where that would have not been an option for Jamie. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. there no, would have been some kind of thing, some kind of way. Because I needed that sort of, I or I, at least I told myself that I needed that type of push in order to be any type of productive you know, or that I wasn't doing enough if I wasn't contributing my time continually to my education. And, you know, and, and I worked really hard and I got through a lot. And at, the, at this point, it's like, you know, I, I want to, I want to put more of my time towards the podcast. Right. I want to put more of my time towards the things that actually feel good and feel right and that's scary because it also challenges my definitions of what productive means mm -hmm. of what accomplishment means mm -hmm. of what success means oh. of what creativity means there's this long list and today when i was listening to um this gal talk about the astrology report and the full moon it kind of very nicely and neatly tied it all up in a little bow for me, you know, and it's like, right now we are simply being asked to revisit shit, get triggered again, 
and use the tools that we've been given. And by tools, I mean all of those lessons that we have learned from the various experiences that we've had and the takeaways that we've had from each of those lessons and kind of, you know, going through that box, like you're looking through a toolbox and going, okay, well, which one of these applies in this situation or which one would I like to try out here? And how can I revisit this situation and have a different experience and have a different perspective and have a different outcome and learn a new lesson that provides a new tool and it just keeps going from there, you know, and it's like, I definitely see that right now. And then the the whole Mercury and retrograde thing is adding a different, an additional supportive layer to that of, again, it's like a do over. There are, there are things that you're getting to look at. There are conversations that you're getting to have again. There's also, um, there's a lot right now kind of surrounding relationships and how your relationships look and function and, um, you know, the kind of energy that's being put in to relationships in general. And I loved one of the things that she was talking about was um, taking a look at, uh, taking a look at the things that trigger you and and how you react and really taking the time to go more inward to look at how you're reacting and kind of ask yourself is that actually me like or is that the projection of what I have learned through society, parents, teachers, television, whatever, just, you know, of waking up every day and being out in the world. Or is that really truly like how I feel in my heart about whatever that is? And taking the opportunity to stop, slow down and actually put ourselves, she put it in a really cool way. She said, putting yourself in your you know, in the shoes of the other individual and finding compassion there around that maybe opposite or opposing view or actually putting yourself in your own shoes and really figuring out how you feel about a situation, not, not the projection that that you've just been, you know, not, or I guess really the reflection, not the reflection of what you've had coming at you all these years, but really seriously, how do you feel about it? And how can you show compassion to that other person and what they're going through and kind of creating this new perspective out of that particular lesson? And I thought that was really cool. It was a neat way to it was a neat way to look at it. And I don't really feel like, you know, we're, we're talking about in most of our minds, what we think of like a, a finite block of time, as far as the full moon energy or the retrograde energy, you know, it starts here and it ends here on the calendar date. But this is, this is a message that we've been getting for a while these are things that we've been revisiting for a while. And this is really, again, another push, another astrological push towards the work that we're already being asked to do. It's just, it's just being made a little more obvious. Sure. When you were talking, they were saying, or I heard in my head, <laughs> that when you're experiencing cognitive dissonance, it means that you're trying to move something into the logical mind before it's ready, before you fully dealt with and become conscious of all the emotions surrounding it. So, and I was just 
telling my brother last night, that's, that's how I feel about this. Like I can't, I can't move what I'm going through into the logical mind yet because I don't even know how I feel about it. So every time I try to logic something, even though there's a lot of tools up in my brain that are like, okay, well, we've dealt with this before. Let's apply this theory to it. Let's apply this action to it. Let's work it out this way. When you try to force something before it's time into being corralled and wrangled and organized and make sense, all you get is cognitive dissonance because that is the only way you can tell yourself, hey, you're unaware of something still. You're trying to squeeze something into a place that it does not yet fit because you don't even know logically and your logic mind does not know to create space for it yet. So what we're telling you is when you are running into walls and dead ends, just stop because there's more emotional stuff that needs to come out to the forefront. There's a part of you that still needs to catch up that hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> well, and yeah, but those... specifically, specifically, you have not become conscious of all your emotions regarding mm -hmm. the thing, whatever the thing is. And so the thing will not be categorized and organized and wrangled and logical yet, because there's still parts of it that you don't understand. And those parts are in the heart space, they're emotions. Sure. And, and that is, that perfectly coincides with, again, with the Pisces energy of this full moon, the Pisces energy is like, relax, do the backstroke in this for a while, see how it feels. Or don't move at all, just float and see where you end up. And it forces you to be more in the moment. It forces you to be more present. It forces you not to search for answers, but to just let them come, which can be really hard, especially up against that kind of Virgo nature of, I have a plan. <laughs> this is, this is telling you to, there's no plan. The plan is to not have a plan this time. Yeah. The plan is to wing it. This time we're going to wing it. You're yeah. going to go out there and you're not going to have a script. I'm so firmly ensconced in that. It is so uncomfortable. I, mm -hmm. I would, you know, I'm, I'm both grateful for it because I can see the freedom side of it and mm -hmm. horrified by it because oh, of course. It, freedom is scary. Flying without a net sort of thing. Uh, but I've definitely felt, especially in the last few weeks, I've started to really connect to that cliche of being in the moment, something, something I learned in theater, <laughs> be in the moment, be in the now. And it's like, okay, even though the cliche is cringy, it is not untrue. Cliches are cliches for a reason. They're cliches right. because they've happened so many times to so many people that do we even have to talk about it anymore? But the answer is yes, we do. And I am, I've reached a point, at least for now, where when someone says, how are you feeling? Well, start more broadly. When someone says, what are you looking forward to? I cannot give you an answer because I do not know where I will be or what I will be doing in the next few weeks. Everything feels like it's in flux. And the second I try to nail something down, something shifts or changes or moves or dissolves. It's like Howl's Moving Castle. I can't keep track. I just have to go with the flow. And furthermore, I can't even tell you how I'm feeling. Like when someone says, how are you? I can't give you an answer because in this current moment, I'm feeling focused and productive. In 30 seconds, I will likely be crying. Dare me. I. I don't know where I will be in 30 seconds. So literally people are asking you these questions and the implication is that you will be able to give them an answer that is sweeping and covers right. a large area and give me 30 seconds and it will be completely different. I will be aggravated, short tempered, and you will be um, at the end of a pike. And it's, it's funny because you say that and I can completely identify because like creating a schedule, <laughs> schedule <laughs> like for a month you know like <laughs> and it's like uh i'm supposed to give you a schedule and then there's 
you know, like we have this finite amount of time that we have to shift the schedule. And then after that, it's set in stone and that's a whole month. And I'm like, you want me to know what's coming down the pike? Like right? three days from now, I have no idea. You, you don't want know me what's to going on in my head. You want well, I'm, fuck your right? head. What about the external reality that's constantly shifting? Because our, what's, whatever's happening in our head, even especially unconsciously, is shifting. So our external reality is constantly shifting. And I can't help it if somebody dies. You want me to give you a guarantee that there isn't going to be 5,000 tower moments before October? Are you joking? Like, that's not realistic anymore. And yet the, the 3D reality is still working on that old paradigm of, you need to be responsible. You need to give us a schedule. You need to rock, 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 rock. But at the same time, I also see a value in going ahead and creating a schedule, even a schedule that is supposed to be like, you know, hey, it's set in stone. And then seeing what happens, just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Make a schedule. Pick something and then <laughs> see what it's like if you try to stick to that. And it's an experiment and try it out. And I literally have to go through that with myself every time I sit down to make a work schedule. I'm like, uh, I don't I don't know what to do here because I don't like literally it, it changes like you were saying, like every 30 seconds, it could be something different. And it's an interesting thing to kind of sit with that for a moment and go, okay, but you are going to make a schedule. So go ahead and make it and then see what happens if you don't freak out about it. Can you not freak out about it? How does that feel? How does mm -hmm. it feel if, if, if it's just there? And what if you make the whole schedule work that month? What if it actually works out in your favor? Then what? Or... Or what if you make the schedule for the month, your life explodes, and you have the opportunity to tell someone who challenges your story of what an authority figure is and makes you feel like you don't have the right to tell them the truth or to disappoint them. And you are able to take that opportunity and say, hey, what can I tell you? Shit exploded. I can't make it. And then what if beyond that, they say, we can't believe you disappointed us in this way and it's the worst case scenario and now you're fired. And what if you have the opportunity to say, okay, I guess I'm supposed to move on to something new. Like, right. what if that were life? But we were never trained that way. We were indoctrinated into this system of, if I give you this word, my word is my bond. And yet, for me, taking it back to the beginning of the podcast, what I learned from my parents is their word was their bond until it wasn't. And so mm -hmm. it just, it's such a mind fuck because the whole point of learning and shifting and expanding and all of those words that we love to throw around as spiritual people on an ascension and awakening path the whole point is to create more space. And so, of course, it's going to challenge whatever stories you have in you that are corseting you into certain behaviors. Sure. Sure. And then it's fun to kind of take back, step, take a step back and look at alternate perspectives for the same situation. It's like, OK, but what all what other you learned this thing the first time around? What do you learn from it? the third time around, the fourth mm -hmm. time around, the fifth time around. When you keep expanding and your platform of your viewing platform expands and you're seeing more and more of the area below you, how much more does that open up the, the full story to see, okay, well, it was shitty back then <laughs> and I really didn't like it. And I think it sucks that I learned that particular thing at that age because I don't think it served me very well at all at that age. It triggered this, 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 and this thing to happen. But the second time I went through that situation, I saw it from this perspective and it filled in a few gaps and I, I could, you know, I, I shifted things about 
how I felt about that situation and how, you know, and how I viewed the other person in that situation or the other people in that situation. And okay. And then I got that lesson out of it. And then you, as you keep going, it's like, okay. So really, ultimately, it's neutral depending on how I react or how I engage in that situation really the thing is neutral it's my reaction to it Mm -hmm. that makes it whatever it is right so how can i get out of the reactive space and into more of a let's just look at it Mm -hmm. for a minute Mm -hmm. like our because we're or at least i am i'm wired to want to fix things (laughs) yes you are so you know something goes wrong and it's like i want to fix it well here here's how you fix that boom 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 boom. fixed and who's that who's that coming through who does that come from and that no literally it comes from your dad that's your dad well yeah it comes from my dad (laughs) and well it comes from my mom too they both Mm -hmm. they both have that in wildly different aspects. <laughs> like it looks very different coming from either side. Mm-hmm. One side is very obvious. One side not as obvious, but it's still there. Mm-hmm. And you know, and there's ways to kind of go, oh, like I see what I'm getting corralled into right now. <laughs> and what happens if I choose not to get corralled? Right. What happens if I just stand here and I don't run you know it's kind Mm -hmm. of like don't run that's why they chase you they chase you because you run if you stop running they will stop chasing you because there's nothing to chase I mean look at some examples if you run while you're ghost hunting you break your leg if you run after a dog who's bolting they run faster into traffic when has running ever worked aside from actually be in a, being in a position where there's a predator. And even then, all you have, once you trigger that run, all you have is to run. Eventually, you're going to run out of steam. And you better hope it is long after the predator does because it's not going to work for you. Instead, if you take a moment to digest, you take a moment. First of all, we've got to stop telling ourselves that everything's a predator. That takes it back to the neutrality yeah. that you were talking about. But we just... Yeah. I know that when the panic is triggered, oh, 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 no, my brain. Nobody better talk to me about neutrality when the panic is triggered. It's like, shut up. <laughs> I can't even, when, you ta- when, when the panic is triggered, my brain becomes this swirling, spinning soup. There, you're not going to get anything good out of me once I'm panicked. And I know that. So part of what I'm working on right now, especially with this upcoming thing I don't want to do, this audition that I'm going to have, um, is is temperance. Like, yes, I, I yeah. see that you're having a panic attack. And that even part of you is still excited to do this. But we're going to take measured steps towards the goal. And we're going to do our best because the panic comes from Oh gosh, any number of stories. What if I fail? What if I get judged? Of course I'm going to get judged. That's the whole point of an audition. You know, these stories are so old and they come from such an, a deep part of me that I couldn't even, I'm not even conscious of all of them. And that's what the process is for. That's what the challenge is for. Well, and can we just visit for just a moment the fact that the energy of excitement and the energy of panic and anxiety are very similar like they're on they're very much on par with each other those kind of that butterfly feeling that buzzy feeling which I have to anytime I'm feeling like that I have to really try to be conscious of what is actually happening because in my body I have not acknowledged excitement enough to that my physical body knows what to do with excitement. My physical body reads excitement as anxiety and panic 
and immediately starts to shut down and go haywire, mm-hmm. which causes a huge mental fuck for me. It's like, <laughs> ah, again, last weekend had this kind of situation where I was very excited. Heather came over. We sat in the same room and broadcasted. Sure. An hour and 25 minutes of that broadcast went to the ether somewhere. It went, to and, heaven. <laughs> it went, it went somewhere for when it will not be found. <laughs> but I, in that whole day, I had this really exciting morning of feeling like, yay, I'm going to have this thing that happens. This was actually like the day before we got together. Right. right. I had this really exciting morning that turned into a really anxious and really um, panicked afternoon, which then sidelined me because the energy I could not, I could not switch gears fast enough in my mental process. Did you even and know I, you needed to switch gears? No. And, and I couldn't, um, in my body, I couldn't get there. I couldn't get back to recognizing excitement as just excitement. I immediately latched on to the panic and the anxiety because that is way more familiar especially physically. And so I could just kind of lived in this pocket of anxiety and panic until I called you and talked about it and went, huh? Okay. That's incorrect. Like that's, that's not a thing that I need. I, I need to separate those two and I need to figure out how to deal with that in my physical body. Because I am fantastic at mental processing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can mental process all day long. I'm actually really good at at emotional processing too. But I am absolute crap still at physical processing. I just tend to not get there. At least not easily. I have to. I have to put myself in a space of, hey, remember that there is a physical counterpart to whatever else you're experiencing and that that also needs to be considered and looked at and nurtured and taken care of. And so, you know, there's this kind of tornado of stuff that happens. And if you are used to getting triggered into a place of panic, remember that when you actually go to do something that you think may actually be exciting to you and understand that it might trigger (laughs) a panic or anxiety attack because you're simply not used to dealing with that. You're, you're old. Physically. You're not used to dealing with it physically. Physically. Yes. You've got it on lock, but your body is not used to processing that volume of energy. And this kind of goes back to something that we talked about in earlier um, episodes of the whole neural pathway, neural pathways getting remapped. You have old Mm -hmm. maps that your physical body is using to direct your energy and you're rewriting those maps. You're, you're making whole new sets of directions and those old detours don't work anymore. And they're sending you into panic land or anxiety land when where you really mean to be is excitement land Mm -hmm. (laughs) these are wildly different places on completely opposite ends of the map Mm -hmm. so you know so it's very interesting to me now to sit in that space and go oh yeah that's something that i need to be aware of and if i start feeling a panic right after excitement I have to question the panic and anxiety. It's like, is it, are you though? Are you really though? Cause mm-hmm. I don't think you actually are. Mm-hmm. I think you're just excitement that doesn't have a place to go mm-hmm. and you don't know what to do with it. And I get it and it's fine, but I kind of have to work my way through it. And you kind of have to just be gentle and easy with yourself. Like I had to stop what I was doing with my day and kind of recalibrate. Like I took a nap. 
I watched something that was like just kind of an old favorite on TV or something, you know, something that didn't require me to pay attention or it just enjoy. Something safe like, there and you predictable. Go. <laughs> I have a whole drawer like, full of safe and predictable videos that I can watch. <laughs> it's like, here you go. Here's the thing that you've seen 8 million times. You do not need to be invested in this. Just relax. Mm -hmm. Just let your mind go. Get in, you know, fall into the story. Follow it. Be happy. Reconnect with yourself in a different way and see what that does in your physical body. And it took a while to get to kind of get that keyed up, you know, oh, my God, feeling to just come back down and relax. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's something that I'm just learning to do more and more as we go along and as we sit in this time of hey remember this thing that you haven't done in a while or that hasn't bothered you in a while guess what here i am we're revisiting how do you feel about it now what are you going to do with it now mm -hmm. now what is the plan do you have a plan do you need a plan do you really need a plan what happens if you don't have a plan <sighs> yeah so I think it's about time to wrap up, if I'm not mistaken. We're we at doing? one one thirty three, an hour and thirty three minutes. So hey, we got like nice. ten minutes to wrap this shit up if we want to. Well, but I just wanted to I just wanted to say that while we're doing a podcast about being uncomfortable, ironically, I have my beloved clip on table fan that has gotten me through the heat wave has decided it no longer wants to fan. Oh no! <laughs> oh, and I was like, no. right at the beginning of the podcast, it was it was blowing <laughs> air, it was chugging away like the little engine that could, and then all of a sudden it stopped. And I was like, no, let it be the plug, let it be the whole plug, let it be all the plugs. And so I changed the plug, and it wouldn't come back on. It would come back on for like two seconds, and it was like, no, I'm lay dead. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. A, in a podcast about discomfort, I have literally been very uncomfortable. You've been schwitzing? Oh my gosh, so much. <laughs> we're schwitzing, but we're not, we're schwitzing, but we're not holishing. Oh my gosh, let's not have the holishing talk again. <laughs> we holished last week. Last week was holishing. We this week it's yes, schwitzing. Yes, last week was definitely holishing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is good. I like this talk. This is a good talk. This was a good talk. It's really just the I, beginning. I, I feel like there's so much more that's good. It, it feels like we skimmed the surface, but it did. feels like we've done the thing. Yeah, true. And that's, you know, that happens. Sometimes we get in it and it's a super, super deep dive. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're just peeling back the corner. Today we peeled back the corner. I don't think and... I have enough to do anything but peel back corners right now. <laughs> My life that feels easy. like a series of peeled back corners right now. But you know what, though? That's okay. Yeah. It's going to have to be because I, I literally do not possess. Time is the only thing that possesses the power to change that. Well, and peeled back corners are a lot more fun than, like, just, you know, having the whole sheet ripped off and, and knowing the thing all at once kind of curling back the corners allows for a little bit of surprise and curiosity and creativity again you all those so. other things huh if you say so i am really really in need of ripping off this band-aid but at the same time i know that what's under the band-aid has not fully healed mm -hmm. so there is no ripping it off i am I've gotten to the point where at least that part of my heart space and my head space are uh, coherent. You know, I know that, well, yes, but balance doesn't really feel like the word. They, they've come to an understanding on this one. And part of the discomfort is that they're in cahoots, but whatever part of my brain is panicking is definitely not in cahoots <laughs> with them. And my guys are just sitting back saying, yeah, we're not saying anything right now. 
you have to go through this process. And I hate that so much. Hate it. Well, we hate it, but we also know that good things are going to come from the process. So yes, absolutely. You know, there's, there's always that the good, there are good things that come from the process. And I totally want to say thank you to the folks that have dropped in on the live. You know, we, we don't always um, make the lives public, but we decided to go ahead and make the live public today since it was kind of very topical. We'll be posting this, you know, barring any weird technical <laughs> issues. Unforeseen complications, Mercury. Not on on wood. Not <laughs> wood. Oh, I am not touching this particular recording for a while. I'm going to give it some time to marinate and hope that it actually all shows up so I can post it mm -hmm. to the uh, full lineup. Our but, regular uh, post date is Thursday. Yes, our regular post date are Thursdays, so Thursdays twice a month, every mm -hmm. every two weeks. And with that, I will go ahead and close us out. So if you haven't joined us before, know that our mission is to empower you. And if you've enjoyed the show, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Help us appease the, the, the algorithm gods. It empowers us to empower others. And if you would like to stay up to date with our insights, our downloads, and our upcoming shows, please check us out on Instagram by searching using our inside voice, all one word. And until next time, this is Jamie. And this is Heather. <laughs> and we are using our outside voice to say stay safe, stay sovereign. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.